Good day. I'm Christopher Busby. I'm the Scientific Secretary of the European Committee on Radiation Risk and I'm going to talk to you about the new dose limits for exposure to non-ionising radiation which are being published this week by the European Committee of non on Non-Ionising Radiation Risk, ECNRR. It'll, um, the, uh, the issue is one of public health primarily um, the the, the, the uh, exposure to non-ionising radiation from cell phones, from these things, and from the towers that are, that are increasingly emitting uh, radio frequency um, in order to, to, to allow people to communicate uh, on, on these cell phones, the, the en energy produ produced by those has now been shown in a number of studies, particularly two studies of rodents carried out in the last few years, to cause cancer and a whole range of uh, health effects. Moreover, the International uh, Agency on Research on Cancer in France has, has now, uh, some time ago, stated that, that this radio frequency radiation is a potential carcinogen. So we're talking about a human health um, issue, and we're talking about um, an issue relating to human rights, because uh, hu all of the human rights declarations signed by all countries have um, clauses within them that say that, that people have the right to not be exposed to um, substances or radiations which are capable of harming their health. But people are not asked whether they're exposed to these things or not, whether, uh, whether they use a mobile phone or not, they're exposed to radio frequency from all of these antennae and from smart meters and from all sorts of other devices which are increasingly common in the environment. So. Following the uh, rodent studies in Italy and in the United States, the European Committee on Radiation Risk decided that it was time to, to regulate this at the level of dose. Because at the moment the regulation is carried out on, at, the, at the level of a specific absorption rate. So in other words, they can regulate the amount of energy coming out of these things, but they don't regulate the amount of energy going into your head. Because that can occur over quite a long period of time. The regulations are, relate to specific absorption rate in watts per kilogram, but a watt is one joule per second. So if you hold this next to your head for one second, you get a lot less, a lot fewer joules into your head than if you hold it there for 10 seconds or 100 seconds or 1,000 seconds or whatever. It's multiplied up by the number of seconds. And all of that energy goes into your head or into your body and uh, is likely to, and it certainly will cause damage, like it caused damage in the rats. So the time has come to regulate the, uh, regulate the levels of um, exposure on the basis of absorbed dose. So the committee, uh, considering this in 2018, decided to develop the idea of a, an absorbed dose unit called the Non-Ionizing Radiation Absorbed Dose, or NRAD. This is one kilojoule per kilogram. 1,000 joules per kilogram, and you get this by multiplying the, uh, the absorption in watts by the number of seconds that, you've, that, that you're receiving this, this dose, this uh, energy. So that's the NRAD, and uh, as a result of looking at the sorts of uh, effects in the rats, the committee used use the effects in rats to decide on dose limits for exposure in NRADs uh, by the year and by the by the day. So if we go to the table here we find that that the dose limits for exposure to um, radio frequency up to 2 gigahertz so that covers that covers all of the mobile phone frequencies but it doesn't cover the, 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 the 5G frequencies which are going to be more harmful and we dealt with that as well. But for the two gigahertz, the, an adult cannot be, should not receive more than fifty uh, NRADs in a year, uh, and for a, a young person aged twelve to nineteen who who, possi who possibly able to conceive, or more likely to 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 be developing con conception of children, it, it's reduced by by a factor of five to ten NRADs, uh, and for a child six to twelve or a pregnant woman five NRADs and for children below six zero so obviously you can't do zero but you can keep the keep the child uh, exposure as low as reasonably 
uh, possible. And for day for the day, the adult cannot re should not receive more than 0 0.14, and for 12 to 19, 0 0.03 and 0 0.014 for the child. So what does this mean in terms of two things? First of all, in terms of the um, mobile phone usage, just usage. Um, we need to, to keep the dose limit, uh, the amount of use of that, to, to less than um, 30 minutes at full power in a day. Of course, for an adult, this is in proportionate for the other, for the other groups, obviously much less for the children and so forth. All of the details are on the website of the European Committee on Radiation Risk. But the second problem is people who are exposed to, cell, to, to these radio frequency radiations from antennae, from, from cell phone masts and from local masts in cities, and increasingly maybe from 5G masts in cities that, 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 that produce this energy at a higher frequency and therefore would be more harmful. These people haven't been given the choice about whether they're exposed or not. And also they're exposed 24 hours a day. So if you live in a city, or if you live near a cell phone mast, your exposures will be 24 hours a day. So there are lots of seconds in a day. So although the actual exposure levels are much lower than the cell phone held to the head or in the pocket, you can multiply by lots and lots of seconds to get the, to get the result. And you will find that people living within 200 meters of a, of a, of a cell phone um, antenna, even nowadays, are, are over the ECNRR limit. Uh, what is the, and what this means for both the cell phone use and the and the people living near the towers, or or the smart meters, or the modems, or or various devices that produce this energy, it means that in 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 twenty years' time, because this is the sort of time lag it takes for cancer to develop, they they have a much higher risk of developing cancer. And have they been have they been and they haven't been asked about this, and they haven't been told about this. So somebody has to do something. Because um, because it's a serious public health hazard. Uh, with ionizing radiation, there is a concept called justification. Now everybody con con concedes, governments concede, and businesses concede, and there are a large number of laws relating to the exposure to ionizing radiation. This is something that the, that the European Committee on Radiation Risk has been concerned about for many years and has written a number of reports. But, but embedded in the concept of, um, of radiation exposure and radiation risk is the concept of justification. So in other words, if you intend to, as a state or as a business or, 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 or um, in any kind of political structure that is, that, that is, um, that is right and honest and just, you have to justify harming somebody on the basis that the that the um, that the uh, country or or the, or the people, the citizens, gain gain something from 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 uh, um, exposing people to whatever it is that that might cause them harm. But this hasn't been done for non-ionizing radiation. In fact, no, none of the there have been no real studies of the effects of, uh, of non-ionizing radiation, no good ones anyway. There could be, um, and there should be, an environmental impact statement written by governments and regulators about the effects of non-ionizing radiation, but there hasn't been anything scientific written about it. Um, the way in which non-ionizing radiation is 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 considered at the moment is on its base on, on the on its ability to increase the temperature of a bag of water. But but hundreds and hundreds of scientific studies now have shown that non-ionizing radiation can cause all sorts of objectively measurable effects in cell systems, in biological systems, and also now we see in in whole whole body animals studies. In insect studies, uh, it has been shown for fruit flies that there is a, that, they, that the exposure to non-ionizing radiation at quite low levels causes developmental effects. And so we're talking about something here that is causing developmental effects potentially 
in human populations and in animal populations. And this, and this must be wrong, and it must be um, addressed. So the European Committee has, uh, on non-ionizing ratios ha has addressed this, and it, it, the, um, the report in which we define all these dose limits and, and functions and so forth is now on the, uh, now, uh, or will soon be on, on the ECRR website and, and elsewhere on the internet. So we would, be wel we would welcome any inputs on this. If people have anything to say or if they have any questions, they can contact the, the contact person whose name and email will be put on the internet. And so thank you very much for listening. Good day. Be careful, because these things are dangerous.